And I'm pretty sure, by the way, that the so the source or, you know, the lake in Mordona, um, Silver Tear Falls, all that shit, I'm pretty sure that that's, like, quite literally, like, the... That might be, like, the, the well of magic of the world, like, the well of eternity of this game, essentially, or, like, the, uh, the, the fa uh, Fount of Erd or something like that, like, basically a, a place where, like, gods in creation came to be. I think that it's actually also not coincidental that the Omphalos floats right over the lake, like, it's probably where Heidelin sundered Zodiac, I would, I think I would agree. At the heart of the world, I honestly would agree, and the lake existing as, like, a magical crater, you know? Or something like that. It seems maybe minor compared to the scarring of the land over in like Tulialal or Yakhtaral, pardon me. Uh, and we'll learn more about that eventually. But the magical properties of it, the density of ether there, um, the location of the Omphalos right above it, uh, the fact that Midgard Sormer was was guarding it on behalf of Hydaelyn. I think all of those things potentially point to it being basically like may, maybe like the magical point of all creation. Or maybe the, the, the well and waters from which, like, the, the ancients originally flowed or something like that. Because we don't really know how the ancients came to be or, like, where they where exactly they began and that kind of stuff, as far as I know. So, I don't know. I just think that that, that place is very important. Um, and I'd like to learn more about that. Fear. Yeah, and the Crystal Tower is built right there as well. And then that tower is used as a focus and confluence point to breach the the realms and go to the other the other shards. So... It's probably not a coincidence that that's where this crystal tower is. I mean, the way that Jesse's describing it as like a nexus of all of the magical energy, it's basically a giant, uh, it's a place where realms can bleed together because it's probably from the point from which the realms were separated and the world was sundered. I think that's the best theory on it, honestly. That like, if it's the portcullis to other places, then the implication then is that it's... It is, it's also the center of the surviving land in the first, absolutely correct. And again, the Crystal Tower built right alongside the well, or the, the well is what I call it, the, the lake. You guys know what the lake is called in the first? It's called the Source. Which is what the main shard is called, the Source. It's like, uh, okay, I feel like there's there's a little bit of hinting there. The So, w we use the moon as well. But I think that there is a possibility for the future that we could use uh, Silver Tear Lake as a means to reach uh, other shards. Um, you know, I think, again, the Crystal Tower being built there and how it's utilized to go to other shards is not coincidental. Crystal Tower was the heart of the Elegant Empire, exactly. You can see a reflection in the water. Coincidence? <laughs> Only if you can walk upon the water. Silver Tear Lake have water like you've never seen before. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are killing me, please. Don't do that. Oh, don't do that to me. This is like water you've never seen before. You can walk on this water. <laughs> it's also where Amarad is located. Um, is that is that correct? Is Amarad in inside the bottom of the source? I thought Amarad was in the in the water off of the west coast of Lenotia. Southwest. Out here. I don't believe Amarat was inside the source. Because we get on Bismarck and we go... I don't... I think that the this lake, it looks to me like it empties into the ocean or something. Maybe that's this river, but I could see it connecting. I'm pretty sure in the first it goes out to the, to the coast. So perhaps the implication is that we ride Bismarck or whatever it's called in the first out there to, to, to it. I'm pretty sure that's what... I think that's what it was. Um, I don't think it's in the source. It's off the coast towards where Limsa would have been. Well, there is we we uh we have a we have a Limsa, you know. Isn't that that whole zone? Bismarck flew, didn't he? The one in the first swam. It was underwater. Remember? Because we had to walk across the water out to the uh to the island to talk to it. And then I think we had to develop a means of breathing underwater. Wasn't that like a thing in a lake land or something? But that Emerald was also a reconstruction that Emmett made. We don't even know if it's the original. Well, I think we know it's not a original, but I don't think that changes its location. After Amarat, Amar we also ended up at the first uh, coast of Limsa. Yeah, what was that? What's that zone called again? Yulmore. Or no, that's the city. What's the zone? 
What the frick is it called? I can't remember what it's called in the first- Calusia! Calusia! Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. That place. So, yeah, anyway. I, I do- I really want to learn more about it. When I- when we were doing the Myths of the Realm, and I found out that, you know, the, uh, the Twelve Gods, um, their Omphalos was above it, I was like, wow, that's- that's pretty crazy. <laughs> like, that's pretty significant. Like, it seems like this- maybe- you know, I guess the- the most likely conclusion to make is that Silver Tear Lake has a, um, a connection to the Ethereal Sea. I think that would be the most logical conclusion. And perhaps through the Ethereal Sea, you can go to other places or something like that. If I had to connect it to one individual, like, source of power or font of power, I think that would make the most sense, especially considering the incredible amount of ether that would have been necessary to create Hydaelyn and do all of that stuff, but I don't know. It's yeah, great. I have a personal headcanon on the name of the lake. Me too. It's called Lake Elunara. <laughs> Just kidding. It's called the Well of Eternity. <laughs> no, but I actually don't. Silver Tear Lake could be the spot where Hydaelyn is under the world. Yes. Yep. Something that we have we've discussed. Yeah, something that actually got brought up earlier as well. And I think it's a great idea because again, if it's the place where the 12, you know, put, put their omphalos above it, it's a place of insane magical power. The crystal tower is built right next to it. The crystal tower can then also be used as a mechanism to traverse to the other shards. I think the implication is that Silver Tear Lake is a font of power or connects to something that allows you to draw upon it to traverse to the other shards. And that is to say, access to the fragments is attained through a point which they were perhaps at once directly connected. So perhaps the source of the Sundering can act as the portal to the shards, if leveraged correctly. Um, so yeah. I think it's I think it's called that it's where she cried after she sundered the world, her tears forming a powerful place of ether and, and dynamis of her emotion. I uh, got a little lost in there. Sorry, typing too fast, it's all good. Imagine if you poured Silver Tear Lake into a fancy swimming pool and then jump and then put a bunch of Elizin near it. <laughs> Yo, yeah, they would turn purple and start practicing the arcane for sure. Until they drew the eye, uh, the attention of the Burning Legion and then sundered the world with a catastrophic explosion, splitting the entire world into different, uh, different continents, but that might be a different universe. Called that because she cried there, Silver Tear. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, I could fuck with that. That, like, perhaps her tears and, and thus, maybe it's more metaphorical, like you said, it's about the outpouring of her emotion. I wonder, um, then, what the level of compatibility or dispersion of ether versus Dynamis would be there. Um, I don't know if it would have been Dynamis. I, I don't know that Vana... <sighs> I don't know that Vana exhibits any evidence of... I just don't know about that. I don't know about that. I think that the whole point was that the ancients were so etherically dense that they couldn't really wield or use dynamis. Uh, and it, you know, so I'm, I'm just not, I can't, I don't know that I can get behind that. But I can get behind like an etheric outpouring or something like that. You know? I can definitely get behind like her tears or something. She said that she wept for the world she had to, she had to make of sickness and ruin. <sighs> yeah, and so maybe... Maybe the tears were dispersed throughout all of the, the Silver Tear Lakes through all the shards. And maybe if something like that were done, then perhaps, you know, perhaps then the etheric density would be lessened to the point where Dynamis could 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 be could be played. I mean, we do think about the I mean, think about it. The, the twelve are right over the the lake, right? At least metaphysically in a sense. So and they're primarily Dynamis beings. So if they can, I mean, that's that's interesting to consider as well. It can't be antithetical to their very presence. Derek proves that. He stands and walks in Mordona with us. I mean, I could definitely be behind it. I just we just gotta have some more some more evidence of it because I think it's a very important place of power, and we know that ether is not the only power in the universe. So having Dynamis be involved in some capacity, I think, is very fitting. I can get behind that for sure. And I like the idea of Yash, her her weeping for the world that she had to make. Yeah, I like that. 
I like that. Silver Tear Falls. And really, again, it being may perhaps the place where the sundering happened is, is, is that's a very smart, smart idea. Let's be honest, man. You can predict the shit in this game. <laughs> you can fucking predict it. We, we've done it, right? So this is the kind of line of thinking that, that allowed me to predict much of the myths of the realm storyline and the events of the Twelve. So I really don't think any of these are bad ideas. I think these are really, really good ideas. And like, it's not, it's, this isn't like, wow, where things are so hidden behind like, ridiculous amounts of lore and books and references and all sorts of shit. Like, yeah, like it's inspired by other things. It's not like, wow, to the point where it's like, oh, are you overcomplicating? And it's like, no, not really. We're kind of just working off what we have in front of us. And that tends to work in this game.